Anderson from the Bromley Common Congregation. I really hope you're well today. I wonder if, like me, you like pottery. It's something I studied at school and I really enjoyed the process of taking what is pretty much mud and moulding it and shaping it into something that's not only beautiful but useful too. My interest has been renewed recently as I've been watching, watching the Channel 4 programme, The Great Pottery Throwdown. And it struck me as I've watched it that the process of pottery is far removed from how I teach it to the children at Hope Church. I might take a small piece of clay and gently and um, lovingly mould it into a bowl. But the process as we watch it on the programme is somewhat different. The clay is thrown and poked and cut and put into a fiery furnace. And although the resulting pots are genuinely works of art, the process is pretty brutal. The Bible teaches us from Isaiah 64 verse 8, you Lord are our father, we are the clay, you are our potter, all of us are the work of your hands. It's hard not to feel sympathy today when we read what's happening to Joseph. He's had to leave his home, his father who he loves, he's hated by his brothers, he's been put in a well, and sold for 40 pieces of silver, wrongly accused and put into prison. And in fact, prison in those days was more like a dungeon or a pit. Prisoners weren't th thought worthy of the price of um, building them a prison cell. Although we don't know for sure, we can estimate that Joseph was in prison for 10 years and it must have been a pretty bleak 10 years. But what we do know for sure is that God had a plan the Joseph that stepped out of the prison was a different person from the proud, youthful, boastful favourite son of Jacob. He had been taken like clay in God's hands and moulded and shaped into the man that God was calling him to be, a mature, humble, forgiving and wise man. Joseph had been given a wonderful gift from God, the ability to interpret dreams, but as a young man, he lacked discernment alongside the gift. Ephesians 2 verse 9 reminds us that all gifts are just that, gifts, freely given to us by God so that none of us can boast, not things we can earn by good deeds or good works. I love how the mature Joseph is able to tell the baker and cupbearer, do not interpretations belong to God. He has moved from being youthfully boastful to giving all the glory to God. So what does our story today teach us about God? The first thing is that God is not in a hurry. I'm sure if I'd have been Joseph in that prison cell, I'd have been praying every day for God to take me out. But God had a plan and he won't rush it. He gently shapes and moulds us and leads us into being the person he has created us to be. You'll notice with potters, that when the clay goes wrong, they don't throw it away. They start again and gently start the moulding process again. And God's like that with us. He doesn't throw us away when we get things wrong, but he will start remoulding and reshaping us. The second thing we notice is something that Rick Warren teaches. God is more interested in our character than our comfort. Some years ago, the time came for us to choose a secondary school for our daughter Lucy. We had two choices, but both schools had a reputation for being really tough. A friend of mine rang me, she goes to another church and she'd been praying for me. And she had a sense from God that he was showing her a picture of Lucy with a pencil case. And she felt that God was saying that Lucy was choosing between two schools. She said God had reminded her of the story of David and how he fought both bear and mountain lion while he was a shepherd. And she said that she felt for Lucy, one school would be like fighting a bear and another like fighting a lion. Not really what we wanted to hear, but that God wanted us to know he was resourcing Lucy, the pencil case. For David, it was five stones and a sling. For Lucy, it was a hunger for the things of God, really, a desire to read his word, to pray and to dig into deep, deep into him. School was tough for Lucy, but she really came out of it just knowing that God is 
really with her and really for her. And the Bible says that when God is for us, who can be against us? The thing about today's story that I most love, though, is how it points us to Jesus. One day, another man would leave his father, would be hated by his brothers, would be betrayed and sold, and would be wrongly accused and punished, even though he had done nothing wrong. This man, our Jesus. And God had a wonderful plan for him too, a plan to rescue the world. When times are tough, I like to remind myself of the story of Joseph and his time in prison. I want to remind myself that God is not in a hurry, that he's more interested in my character than my comfort, but that he's got a plan, a good plan. And the great news is he will resource me. He will never leave me. He will always comfort me, always love me. And if we ever find ourselves like those pots in a fiery furnace, we can remind ourselves that like the three men in the book of Daniel that go into the fiery furnace, it was clear there were four men there. Jesus was in there with them. Jesus is with us today too. Shall we pray? Father, we want to thank you that you are our father. You love us and you are our potter and we are the clay. You hold us, you mould us. And you call us to be the people you've created us to be. You're not in a hurry. Father, we pray for opportunities to share the good news about Jesus with our family, friends and people we meet. And we thank you, God, that you are always with us and always for us. In Jesus' name, we pray. Help us to be kind and a blessing wherever we are. Amen.